If you're a work at home mom who's looking for an easy way to build connections with other people and other work at home moms, stick around because I've got three tips for you to help you build connection even when life feels really lonely. Hey there fellow work at home moms. Thanks for joining us here in our cozy little corner of the internet world where work at home moms abound and toddlers are crazy because let's be real, that's pretty much, pretty much what it is. So I hope you grab your coffee. I am doing iced coffee, which is a little weird because we're in the middle of winter where I am, but it does not feel like winter currently. So we are diving into the iced coffee and drinking it like crazy. So grab your coffee and let's sit down and talk about ways that we can build community as work at home moms, both with other work at home moms, but also just with other people in our lives to help enrich our lives and so that we can help build others up as well. First, I think it would be really helpful to just discuss the value of community and relationship. We could look up all the stats and all of the information, but I'm not going to do that because you can go look that up for yourself. The point is having community is super important. We all learned that back in 2020 when we realized how much we missed community or how much we really wish we had community to fall back on when we were struggling or when we were lonely. So I don't think we need to argue about the value of community. And I think as work at home moms, it's even more important because a lot of times we forget that we need other people and we get really caught up in being so busy and getting everything done ourselves and sticking to a really strict timeline. And, um, and then of course, you know, just having toddlers around keeps you busy anyway. Just being a stay at home mom with toddlers is enough to keep somebody busy enough that they aren't thinking about connection and community and relationship. Throw in working at home. I remember, especially when I had really little kids, that I would, I would get so busy and so focused on working and taking care of my family. And then I would realize that I hadn't even left the house all week. I'd been busy, I'd been working, I'd been productive, but I hadn't seen a single soul and probably wasn't going to see another person until Sunday when we went to church. And I remember kind of realizing that this felt super backward because as a work at home mom, the point of being a work at home mom is so that you can have some flexibility so you can have control over your schedule. So it seems super backwards to be a work at home mom so that you can lock yourself in your house all day. So before we start off, I want to give you permission to invest in community, both for yourself and for your children. This makes a big difference, especially if your kids are homeschooled, because you may not have any reason to get out and see anybody or you may be a huge social butterfly and you may have all sorts of activities and maybe you need to actually scale back on some of your activities I don't know a lot about that because that's not me I'm a bit of a homebody I love people I love going out and seeing people but it is a lot easier to stay home so I tend to do that so before we jump into the three tips on how to expand your community as a work at home mom I just want to make sure that you understand that it's okay to have community, it's okay to invest in that, in your life and in your children's life and in your family's life, and it's actually really, really good for you, and it'll probably increase your productivity if you get right down to it. <laughs> okay, I know it sounds a lot easier said than done, but I do have a couple tips for you to help you expand your community and build relationships with other people, even as a work at home mom. So. Stick with me because even if the toddler is clinging to your leg and your coffee is cold when it shouldn't have been and you don't even know where to start, I've got a few places and a few ideas for you that can hopefully help get you on the right path to finding community. Step number one would be to reach out to fellow work at home moms in your area. Now, depending on where you're located, this may be really easy or it might be really complicated. I live really rurally, so there's not a lot of people around me but there are some work at home moms in the area or there are other stay at home moms that I could reach out and befriend. Now, it can be a little harder to figure out how to even do this. Where do you start? Facebook groups. That can be a really easy way to start finding some people in your community. Specifically moms, look for play groups, look for outdoor play groups. There's a lot of homeschool communities um, especially that like to get together for outdoor play, whether it's exploring the woods or going to parks or playgrounds. Um, that can be a really great beginner first step for spreading out your community and meeting new people. Other things you can do is you could 
look for co-ops and other groups of people who may have similar interests or activities as you and start with that. Maybe it's a mops play group. I never got into mops because it was far enough away that I could never really justify it and it just didn't seem like it was going to be my style, but I've heard a lot of really great things about it. So maybe look for a mops play group. I think one of the biggest things that people don't realize is that part of the reason people really like going to church is because it builds community. So if you're not plugged into a local church, that can be a really great place to start meeting some people, start making some friends. You might have to test a couple out before you find the one that you really like, but it can be a really great way to get plugged in to some people that could become really great lifelong friends for you. We have a lot of really good friends from our church, and so that can be a really great way to kind of build some community and spread your wings a little bit. Another thing that we did in our family to help kind of expand things a little bit was we got our kids enrolled in things. So we're at this phase now where our kids are old enough that it makes sense to go take them to some activities. We don't really want to get crazy, but there are a few things that we could do. We do homeschool our kids. So getting them involved in a local co-op was a really easy way to spread out and meet more people, incorporate more people into our community and build more relationships highly encouraged. It was a great way for us. Another thing that we've also done recently is added in some troops or scouts into our kids' lives. So American Heritage Girls and Trail Life were both some really great options for our family and our interests as a way to meet other people and find other people in our community. Now, it's true, you might not find a lot of other work-at-home moms in those communities, but you might be surprised how many moms out there are actually balancing this work from home life juggle. So it could be a really fun way to meet some other people. And lest it be obvious, coming and partnering with the Mom Desk Club through our Facebook group, on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube, even in a Facebook group, which is still just starting, so it's kind of small, but that's okay. That can be a really fun way to get to know other work at home moms. I created this. I came up with this, all of this idea because I realized that as a work at home mom, I was so isolated and I didn't have a lot of people that I was interacting with and building community with. And it thought it would be really fun to meet other work at home moms who understand the challenges, but also so that we can all work together and help improve each other's lives. So make sure that you're staying tuned with us. Subscribe to the channel, comment, and let's start building a community here because what better way to build community than virtually, which, you know, can be really easy when you're a work at home mom. Okay, step number two is don't be afraid to ask for help. It's so hard, especially as really driven women to ask for help. But I want you to keep in mind something that I've been thinking about a lot lately is that if you consider it, flip the roles for a minute. If somebody asks you for help, most of the time, depending on the person, obviously, most of the time you are going to be so glad to help them. It makes you feel good. You're glad to be a part of their lives. You're glad to feed into somebody else's life. And so it really makes you feel good to help somebody out, whether it's taking dinner over or helping them with their kids or anything like that. It makes you feel really good to help somebody. Flip those roles and think about all the people who would actually really love to be helping you. I know it feels like a burden and I know it makes you feel really like problematic to be asking for help, but as you build your community, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to rely on other people. And as long as not that helping is an exchange, because I don't want anybody to think that it's like a, I help you, you help me, and we're going to just keep this tallied down and keep it, you know, keep it even Steven. That's not what it is. But I feel like when you're paying into other people's lives with your time and they're paying into your life with their time, it makes it a lot easier to work with each other in that kind of way. So maybe you make an arrangement with another local work at home mom where you keep her kids on Tuesday and then she keeps your kids and her kids on Thursday and you do these swaps. Maybe it's just for the morning. Um, and that way you can get some work done on one morning. She can get work done on the other morning and you can kind of work that out. And maybe it's just as simple as you don't have a lot of people around right now. You're still building your community and you have to rely on your spouse to help you out with stuff. And so it's more of a matter of saying, Hey honey, I've got a big, really, really big deadline today. Is there any way that you could take the kids into town and go get dinner with them so that I can finish this up? 
don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask people to come in and help because you're not super mom, even though you're really super and you're a great mom. You don't have to be super mom. You don't have to be a martyr and you don't have to be this victim of your own really busy work at home mom schedule. It's no fun and you don't have to do it. <laughs> All right, and step three is to make time for regular meetups. I know this sounds really simple, but one of the things that a friend and I did back a long time ago when we had little kids was we decided to make this commitment that we were gonna see each other once a month. That was a lot for us to commit to. And even at the time we were only getting together just for the morning because we had people that needed naps after that. And so we made this commitment to each other that we were going to make carve out one morning a month where we were going to get together and have coffee and the kids were probably going to fight while we were doing it and we were going to have to work things out with that and it was going to be really hard to get everybody buckled up and get there on time and sometimes we're texting each other and we're like i'm running behind i'll be there as soon as i can but we made that commitment to guard that one day a month and that made all the difference at least we knew no matter what we're gonna see each other once a month because I know that you have those relationships where you really love hanging out with those people, but next thing you know, it's been six months and you haven't even seen them and you're like, where did the time go? That really helps combat the whole where did the time go situation. So maybe for you, it makes more sense to do every other week, or maybe you want a need to carve out one morning a week where you're getting together with a friend and getting coffee, or maybe you're joining or starting a book club and once a week, you're carving out that morning for book club. Nothing else is going to take over. You're not going to schedule meetings. You're not going to schedule deadlines. You're going to keep that one morning a week for book club. But when you carve out regular time, it really helps make it easier for you to stick to it and stay committed to it. And I remember being a really young mom with really young kids and working from home and guarding that time was hard especially if you had a lot of other deadlines that were kind of coming up. So at the time, you know, I was working as a social media manager and it was hard to carve out that time. I'd have to work ahead. I'd have to schedule things. I'd have to plan on working later that day if I was going to take the whole morning off to go visit with a friend. But it's so worth it and it's so energizing. It's also very energy depleting and that's okay. It's okay to use your energy to invest in other relationships. All right, there we have it. Three simple steps for how to build your community even as a really busy work at home mom with toddlers. We've been focusing on toddlers all season. They deserve a whole season because they are a whole different ball game. So if you are struggling to build a community as a work at home mom with toddlers, just know that you're not alone that we're all in the same trenches with you trying to figure out how to build community. And instead of sitting around feeling sorry for ourselves that we don't have community, let's jump in and find ways to create community, even if that's just through the screens of our computers for now. Small steps, baby steps, guys, it's okay. So I hope that these tips are helpful. I really enjoy taking time to sit down and chat with you a couple times a week about motherhood and being a homemaker and being a work at home mom and trying to figure out how to juggle all of those same pieces together. It's bizarre and it's fun. And as I really like to say from our dear friend, Abby Halberstadt over at M is for Mama, hard is not the same thing as bad. We're doing a lot of hard things over here, but that doesn't make it a bad thing. So keep doing the hard things, keep doing them well, keep up the good fight. You've got this. And until next time, see ya. Really quick, I hope you stick around next week. I'm really excited to just have a really relaxed mom, mompreneurs, work at home mom wisdom chat. We're just going to sit down and talk about a couple things that come up as work at home moms as we wrap up this season that is dedicated to those crazy little people that we love so much, the toddlers in our life. So we're wrapping up the season in our next episode and I really look forward to seeing you then. 